Welcome to Sage Audio. Today, let's look at the top 10 advanced mastering tips. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. How clipping can help transients. This first tip is a little counterintuitive. By definition, clipping will attenuate transients. However, clipping adds high frequencies, somewhat similar to white noise. Now, since this white noise is added whenever a transient hits a clipper's ceiling, it's almost like high frequencies or white noise is added to each transient. Now, granted, if you smash the signal into a clipper, this doesn't work too well, but if it's done carefully and isolated the transients, you can actually improve the listener's perception of these transients. So let's take a listen to it. Higher sampling rate or oversampling. Ideally, when you're mastering, you're going to have access to a 96 kilohertz sampling rate file, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Now, oversampling is typically better at avoiding aliasing distortion since it increases the signal sampling rate and introduces low pass filters above 20 kilohertz. This means that many of the harmonics generated from aliasing will often be filtered or at least have their amplitude reduced significantly. An audio example of this is a little difficult to demonstrate, but let's heavily distort our mix's high frequencies and A, B with and without oversampling. Now this mix has a sampling rate of 44.1 kHz, but you'll notice a significant reduction in aliasing distortion regardless. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Modulation and advanced mastering. In my opinion, modulation is going to be a big part of audio processing in the future. That filter popularized linking modulation to plugin parameters and UVI has expanded on that in their Shade EQ. Now, one thing in particular that interests me a lot is the idea of randomization. Now, that said, I've linked randomization filters to four EQ bands to very subtly alter the frequency response of the overall mix. Now, with these filters, I was also able to vary the left and right channels for each stereo band, meaning the stereo image modulates subtly as well. Now, let me know in the comments if I'm just imagining this, but to me, this slight variation gives the mix a lot of life and this somewhat unexplainable dynamic quality. Advanced Saturation with Modulation Like I said in the last chapter, Saturn 2 lets us modulate saturation with an envelope follower that measures the transient I dynamically distorted each frequency range to varying degrees as well as dynamically pan that distortion and the overall level to the mid or side image. Furthermore, I modulated the dynamics of each band so that each transient caused the range to be more dynamic before compression occurred on the back half of the waveform. Now, I could even increase the amount of the overall effect by linking the follower to the mix slider. So let's take a listen to how the saturation fills the sound, like you'd expect, but includes a lot of complexity like dynamic stereo imaging and more. Isolate and expand side image. I like this effect on drums usually, but it works just as well on a full mix. In short, I'll duplicate the main track and use MSED to solo the side image. Then I'll use a transient expander to amplify the side image's transients, which adds a lot of detail. Lastly, I'll blend the process side image in with the original using the channel fader. Now, although most DAWs will compensate for latency, be sure to take a listen for any phase cancellation that might occur. Previewing multiple limiters. We often get in the habit of using just one limiter for all of our projects, but it helps to line up a few different ones with similar amounts of attenuation to get a good idea of what's needed. Now, I typically just put these on the master output and cycle through. When doing this, you might find that a limiter that you don't use too often or usually don't like the sound of actually works best for the mix. So let's take a listen to three different limiters and let me know which one sounded best to you.
Today's video is brought to you by LaLal AI, a next-generation neural network trained in separating and extracting various instruments and signals, all with minimal audio artifacts. To use it, simply upload your track, let the AI process it, and then preview the results. It can separate vocals from instrumentation, as well as drums, bass, electric guitar, and more. Additionally, they offer a vocal cleaning program that's great at attenuating unwanted noise from a vocal or dialogue. Right now, they're offering a free starter package, so check that out using the link in the description. Mastering left and right separately. Our stereo output can be separated into left and right channels on which processing respective to that channel can be added. Although I usually like to process my stereo output collectively, I found that using separate limiters on the left and right reduces unwanted artifacts. The reason being, each limiter won't have to work as hard, letting you achieve a louder sound without aggressive attenuation. Let's take a listen. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Blending Upward Processors There are a few great upward processors out there, but I found that each one works a little differently. That said, if you combine multiple types like the Oxford Inflator with the Weiss Maximizer, you'll affect different aspects of the quieter parts of your signal and in varying ways. Now, although I don't think that this works great for every master, combining upward processors often achieves a complex and desirable full sound and reduces the need for aggressive limiting later on. Let's take a listen. DSing works well when mastering. DSing is probably the least appreciated form of processing, but its role in mixing and mastering is crucial to creating a balanced sound. That said, Definitely don't avoid DSing during mastering, especially if amplifying the signal brings up unpleasant sibilance that could have been easily attenuated. If using a DSer during mastering seems strange, then you could use a multiband compressor to attenuate sibilance or a dynamic EQ, but definitely don't make the mistake of trying to change your chain around sibilance when a subtle DSer would work well. Let's introduce DSing to this track to illustrate that it still has a place in a mastering chain. Be a little paranoid when mastering. This last tip is a little weird, I'm sure, but it's helped me avoid mistakes in the past, so I still wanted to share it. Now, one thing I always do is remove any processing that isn't playing an active role in the chain. For example, metering plugins like an LUFS meter, and I won't just bypass these, I'll actually completely remove them, because although it probably isn't affecting the sound, why not be 100% sure? Or maybe if I'm doing a revision to a track that I previously mastered, I won't simply make the change and bounce it out, I'll listen to the full track to ensure that nothing inadvertently got changed. Now maybe this seems like overkill, but true story, I do know one engineer that didn't do this on a revision, and long story short, sent the wrong version out and it went out to distribution. So, just always double check, and take any precaution that you can when you're mastering to ensure that the final product is as good as it could possibly be. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.